Hi, welcome to part seven of my TMUX series on increasing your productivity. And I'm going to be talking again about e-links. So this is going to be part two, uh, talking about e-links. And that's how important I think the e-links is to increasing your productivity. It's a, and it's not widely used among the TMUX community is using a console-based browser. You can use links to uh, or uh, other console-based browsers. I think there's a few more, but I'm going to go over the rest of the, my uh, e-links configuration file. So let's check. Let's get right into that. In part six, I left off making a new tab in e-links. So let me get back to to that, and let's. Oops. Okay, there we go make the e-links pane a little larger. Now, to, I usually only do two tabs. So I don't do a lot of tab management things. But So I opened up the tab and uh, you can see that uh, there's a My Vim cheat sheet at the bottom left. I'm in the Ruby hash search right now. Now, to go to back to My Vim cheat sheet, which is the other tab, I use the caret key left and then carrot key right goes me back gets me back to that tab I think you're gonna find that two tabs is adequate and so that'll conclude uh, the instruction on tabs okay let me go back to the let me go back to the bindings let me start right at the top there Okay, here are the key bindings, and I'm just going to go over the ones that I use a lot. A lot of these I don't use very often. Now, I don't scroll left. Elinks doesn't usually have that problem. Doesn't brow, doesn't uh, render that way where you need to scroll left and scroll right. So I don't use that a lot. Some of these I just put in the beginning, took them off other people's configuration files, ended up not using them very much. I should probably clean them up. Um, now, the history manager, I don't, I very rarely use, but if you, you get a little modal box with the history. I use this all the time. I went over that earlier or in the last screencast. J and K to go up and down. Scroll right, same as scroll left, don't use it. Now, K and J, I do use very often. Oops, okay. And how that works is I'm here now in the left pane and you see that Ruby hash is highlighted. Now if I use uppercase J, I go to the next link, next link J, uppercase J. I keep going down these links. I go up the links with capital K. Um, yeah, I can't say much more than I just, I do use that very often. So let's continue on with these. I'm back in the right pane now. And the space, this is to go down a page. I'm going to go back over here to the left pane and I'm going to use the space key now and I'm going down the page. So let's continue on. The next one here is Vim bindings or similar Vim bindings for going to the top of a document or to the bottom. So if I do lowercase g, I go to the top, uppercase g, I go to the bottom of the document. So if you're a Vim user, I do use that one quite often. Let's go back. There's a, a mapping for reloading the page, a binding. Let me center this. And I don't use that one often. These next two I do use a lot, as I mentioned. In last screencast, uh, having uh, the go to URL you use all the time. So I'm going to hit lowercase o and I get this modal box. And this is your centerpiece of your usage in eLinks. As I mentioned in other screencasts, also, is the escape key gets you out of trouble in eLinks when you start popping up modal boxes. You don't know what's going on. Uh, just hit the escape key and that gets you back out of that modal box. Now, the capital. O gets you the current URL you are on. Now this is, oops, let me do that again. Okay, this gets you the URL. Now you have to use the arrow key to scroll. I, I was using the some of the Vim bindings, but to see the URL search, 
is capital O, and I do use that quite often. I also have a binding for going back a page, the back in the history. Let me go back over it because I missed it. Okay, so back button is capital H. Let me go to the left pane here and hit capital H. That got me back to the my Vim cheat sheet. So let me just check that that's not a different tab. Okay, yeah, it's not because I just switched tabs. And then the capital L would go to your history forward. Now I use the history back a lot. I do not use moving forward much uh, similar to uh, in our GUI browsers. We mostly use the back button, not use the forward button too much, but I do have it mapped and I do use it from time to time. Okay, continuing on. Let me go back to where I was. Okay, so there's this new open new tab in background, never use that. Closing a tab is would just be Q, and I took that off because C is C in in screen creates a new window, and C in Elinks closes a tab. So that's now being bound to a more logical Q. And then lastly, the last binding I have is capital Q is uh, this unbinds quit without warning because it's too dangerous. So each time I hit capital Q, I, oops, I'm hitting the wrong key. So what order is my, okay, I'm using lowercase. Yeah, so it unbinds capital Q um, because capital Q would just close you out of Elinks. So um, just the natural binding, the default binding of lowercase q gives you quit with a warning. And this is very useful because you do tend to hit the Q button and, and capital Q button and you don't want to close out of any links if you're in the middle of doing something, of course. Okay, that does it for my bindings to, I'll have this link in the article, but there's a good man page on the default bindings for Elinks. You want to uh, check that out. Uh, you wanna make aliases and the shortcuts for your browsing habits, that which may be very different than mine. Well, that does it. I've gone over the way I use Elinks in T within Tmux, and I've gone over my entire Elinks file, and, and I've exhausted the way I, I use it anyway, and you may, find uh, new ways to help your uh, reduce your context switching and that's what I encourage if you're not using eLinks is to invest the time into using the console based browser for certain things or as many things as you can because it has helped me stay focused on my task again thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next installment and increase your developer productivity with tmux